Hello, everyone. My name is Roy Steiner. And I'm Sarah Farley. We're from the food team of the Rockefeller Foundation, here to talk about the future of food. You know, when we started thinking about the future and, and future visions, we took a, a look at what movies and books are out there that describe the future. And it's, there's hundreds of them. And when you do look at that, the unfortunate thing is 98% of them are dystopian. They're really dark. They're Mad Max, Hunger Games, Black Mirror. The list just keeps going on. You actually have to really search to find a book or a movie that describes a world you would actually want to live in. So we spend hundreds of millions of dollars describing worlds we don't want and almost nothing describing really the, the, the vision of future we actually want. And when you look at the, look at the food system, you actually um, can fall into that pattern as well. We all know uh, the challenges of poor diets, and we all know the, the impact of, of uh, the ag agricultural system on, on climate change, etc. cetera, and, and the list goes on. The challenge, of course, you know, dystopia has actually a role. It creates energy, um, some fear, and by the way, they, they actually make pretty good stories. Um, but if you only have dystopia, you actually can't create the world you actually want because it doesn't unleash, you know, there's always two creations, first in your mind and then reality. And you don't unleash the creativity and the innovation you need if you can't imagine it. And, you know, there's a parable that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I think we're, you know, that's a 2,000-year-old uh, wisdom, and I think we're in a culture that's at risk of perishing because we actually can't envision the world that could be if we make the right decisions. So, in light of that, uh, in order to address that and unleash some positive forces into the world, the Rockefeller Foundation is announcing today um, the creation of the Food System Vision Prize, which will be a $2 million prize uh, that will be go around the world, uh, up to 10 winners. Um, but it's not the cash that's going to be the most amazing thing, is we're going to really work with these visionaries to add, give them uh, visual artists and uh, data scientists and uh, science fiction writers to really bring their visions to light. Because we just found out last month, the Secretary General of the United Nations has announced that in 2021, there's going to be the first ever food system summit. And we hope that these visions will be visions that really represent the really the incredible diversity of food systems in the world and 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 the voices of the people that need to be heard will be heard at the global level so i um, you know we want to move from the dystopian the uh, the um, surviving the incremental solutions to really things that are optimistic that are thriving that are really transformative and in order to do that we're asking groups, companies, NGOs, universities, governments, anybody who ha wants to think about the future, to describe the food system of 2050 in their local regional area. Not for the entire globe, that's too abstract, but in your, your town, your village, your food system, your, your food shed. And we think by doing that, you're going to get a lot more connected. It's going to require a lot more conversations and, um, and really create dialogue. And if we do that right, we think this will really inspire people in a way that uh, is needed because they can now see it. We'll un un uh, discover the knowledge that's n both needed, the research priorities we need to go in that direction, but also uncover knowledge that's already there. You know, some, there's incredible wisdom from indigenous peoples and philosophies and, and groups out there. And then secondly, uh, thirdly, um, we want to connect people together because sharing of ideas creates incredible um, movements. And then finally, I think we're going to unleash a set of innovations that are going to be needed to create the food system that we want. So, uh, what is this promise of a vision? Um, I think... Uh, I have to admit that at times I, I can get pessimistic. I think we all can at times. Uh, I'm a sh but I'm only a short-term pessimist. I'm a long-term optimist. To get through the darkness that can potentially happen, I think we need lights of, of a vision to help guide us. We need north stars. And, and that's what this vision process, we hope, will, will, uh, will unleash. And in order to describe that, 
uh, in a little bit more um, detail, I'm going to hand it over to Sarah. Great. Thanks, Roy. So you might be wondering, how could you possibly take hundreds, maybe thousands, of potential food systems visions and compare them to select winners to give them a large prize? We thought a lot about that. So I want to share with you a little bit about what we're thinking in terms of evaluation criteria. One, we're thinking about systems, truly a systems-focused approach. You know, so often in food, as in water, other sectors, we look at very isolated parts of the challenge and the solution set, and we, we miss the mess, the interconnections between technology, policy, culture, environment. So we really want to embrace this systems approach. Second, we're looking for visions that are really truly transformational. These are audacious shifts from where we are to where we need to be. Third, we're not looking for anyone to put themselves forward as a visionary that sort of imposes their thoughts of what a community should do. We want these to be inclusive, led by communities and engaging communities. Fourth, we want to ask all of the visionaries to explain in some way what they're assuming about the evolution of science and technology from today to 2050 that would make their idea of the future plausible. And finally, we want these to be inspirational. Roy talked about hope. We need the hope, and what we want is for these visions to inspire a movement. So, Another way to get at this, this idea of what a vision is and how we articulate it, is to put forward tough questions that we'll be asking all of you, who we hope will apply for this prize and everyone around the world. So if we think about the environmental shifts and climate change, to take one phenomenon, even if we curb greenhouse gas emissions, we know by the year 2050, the crops that grow in the particular agroecological zones in which they grow today likely may not be able to do so in 2050. So the question we'll ask each of you to answer is, how will your food system adapt to a changing climate to ensure resilience? Second, Today, the number one killer globally is diet-related disease, more than any other cause, which means our diets have to shift if we're to curb this tsunami of diet-related disease that is crushing the United States and headed for the developing world. So what is a healthy diet, a nutritious diet, going to look like in 2050? What do you hope it looks like? Third, whether we're looking at the performance of farms or the price paid for farm inputs and outputs, this all has consequence for consumers, policymakers, farmers, and other value chain actors. So how do we want profit to be shared in our food systems of 2050? Some projections suggest that between 50 and 80 percent of food and agricultural jobs will be replaced or outmoded by the year 2050 because of automation and artificial intelligence. So our question to visionaries is, what do you hope from these two particular technologies, automation and AI, in terms of the future of the workforce, how work is done in food and agriculture? And last, I think for so many of us, food is a source of community. It's a source of connection. It has this power to ignite creativity and spark joy. So how will we ensure that communities thrive in our future food systems? So imagine those and many other questions being offered up to anyone applying for the prize in the form of a toolkit. Our partners in design, Second Muse and Open IDEO, have been working with us to build this journey, really, that begins October 29th with the opening of the submission process. And this is really a, a set of tools, systems thinking, futures, and others, to really help contenders, applicants, try to think in really bold and new ways. So I want to go back to one of those movies where I talked about the dystopian phenomenon in so many pop culture movies, uh, television shows. One of them, Minority Report, some folks might have seen it, paints a picture of a particular world infused with certain kinds of technology. And that world, for those of you who've seen it, might have seemed a little far-fetched. Actually, after the issuance of that film, more than 20 patents were filed for technologies featured in the movie Minority Report. 
So even these seemingly far-fetched ideas that come about as a, as a function of ideating what our future could be like have application in the real world. So for us, with this Vision Prize, we really think this is the start of something very big. And for you, the investors, entrepreneurs assembled here at SoCap, this is a chance to imagine and put forward ideas for what the investable innovations and social enterprises will be for the next century. And we think this is phenomenally important because we must first envision things to believe in them. And only once we believe it can we build it. So we look forward to all of you joining us in this endeavor. We launch October 29th.